Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we have a kind of special review. This is going to be my Christmas Day review of 2017. And uh, as you'll have known if you watch the channel, I've been based in Durham in England for the last couple of months doing my school teacher training before I head back to Sweden in around June or July of 2018. And uh, as you'll have known when I was over there I tried some really pretty damn awesome beers. I've been hugely impressed by the standard of Scandinavian beers and I found some really 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 good breweries over there and I knew during my time in England I would be seriously missing those so I kept a special beer aside for my Christmas Day review. So for this one we're going to return to one of my favourite breweries in Scandinavia and that of course is Amar Brukus from Copenhagen. So this beer is called La Santa Muerte. Oddly enough it's not actually named after anything to do with Christmas. It has a completely different name but we'll go over that a little bit later and this one is an Imperial Honey Stout that comes in at 10% ABV. If you've watched the channel before you will know what I think of Amar Brukus because they do some really, really awesome IPAs and things, but some of the dark beers they produce as well are pretty damn good. I would say probably, though, the best beers I've had from them have been the IPAs. My favourite ones have been the IPAs, but... Um as I say, some of the dark beers that they've produced as well have been really damn good. So watch my Amar reviews. I really love reviewing beers from this brewery and I'm glad that I kept this one aside for my Christmas Day review and I hope you guys enjoy my take on the beer. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, of course, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Amar Brewkus before. This must be review number 25 or 30, something like that. Um, there's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city or state, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Danish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys, and the support that you give the channel is hugely appreciated. And do in particular let me know about any the other Danish breweries and things that I might not have come across yet. I know the standard of beer in Denmark and particularly in Copenhagen is pretty damn good. I would go as far as saying that Copenhagen's probably you know, the craft beer capital of Europe these days. They produce some really awesome stuff. But anyway, to tell you a little bit about Amar Brukus then. So Amar Brukus, as, I mentioned to before, as I've mentioned to you before, are based in Kastrup in Copenhagen in Denmark. And they're probably one of the best known at Danish craft breweries that brew most of their beer in Denmark, if you like. Probably the best known Danish craft brewery is Mikeller, actually. But the brewery were established back in April 2007 by two friends. And this was Morten Valentin Lundsback and Jakob Storm, both of whom were avid home brewers. But apparently in school, the pair were forced to do a chemistry and physics project together so they wrote about the fermentation process that went on in beers and they gained their brewing diplomas from the Scandinavian Brewing School in 2008 and uh, the company since then has really kind of flourished and it's gone on to be one of the most decorated breweries in Denmark and quite rightly so in my opinion. Like I was saying to you some of the IPAs and stuff that these guys have produced have been really damn good. Batch 1000 is probably my favourite beer that I've had from these guys but there are some really other good, uh, other really good beers in there like Building Bridges um <laughs> The, the Bastard Princess and things like that and there, there was the, I forget what it was called, the Amazing Gotland Campfire Beer that's one of my favourite ones that I've had as well but they've got a whole range of different beers and they're always producing different things, they've got a, a kind of, a, what's interesting about them as well is that they do have a range of kind of regular beers that are sort of they're almost like transition beers if you like they're not too craft if that makes sense and they've got those to try and get people into drinking more complex beers which is pretty cool and then they've got their Mobster series they've got the Seven Sinners series and uh, all of this kind of thing and then they've got the random beers that they do like this so a very very cool brewery that are always experimenting and these guys in particular do a hell of a lot of different collaboration beers but their first brewery that they had was located in Tornbu in the southern part of the city I have been there actually for one of their garden parties and they were constantly expanding that for a few years but they have actually now a bigger site which is closer to the airport and they've got that all fitted and they've increased their capacity since they've been there so those of you watching in different countries will start to find the Amar beers more regularly now I know you can can get some of them, like the Imperial Stouts and things, in Australia and South America and North America and stuff like that, but you will start to find the Amar beers a lot more readily now, which is awesome. These guys, like I say, are one of the best breweries in Scandinavia, in my humble opinion. But anyway, that's all you need to know about the brewery just now. As I always say, the link to the brewery website and stuff is in the description below if you want to read more. So let's get on to the tasting of this beer itself. So as I mentioned to you, this guy's a 10% Imperial Stout. I'll just let you have a little quick look at the artwork of this one before we open up there. You can see La Santa Muerte. 
and it tells you the story of La Santa Muerte on the side here. So it says, while La Santa Muerte in English, uh, Our Lady of the Holy Death, is a well-known folk saint, especially in Central America, it is known to very few that this lady of many a good thing also has a secret cult following here on Amar. Yes, you heard it right. In recent years, locals claim to have seen evidence of La Santa Muerte celebration on the huge, desolate, heath-like area known as Calbud Felid, uh, Calvabud Commons, right next to Amar Brucus. In the days immediately following Halloween, wanderers on the common insist they've found fresh bones from sheep and cattle, some even claiming to have seen human bones, and passengers on low-flying planes coming into Copenhagen Airport tell stories of huge moving circles uh, of light on the ground, like people dancing with torches. Uh, local officials sternly decry such reports as utter urban legends. However, if you feel that this could possibly be much more than a just than just a tall tale, we recommend that you go and see for yourself at Halloween. Should you feel a sudden lack of courage, a bottle of La Santa Merte uh, will both help you and protect you. Amar Brucus. So yeah. I always like these little labels and stuff that they put on the, or these little blurbs that they put on the beers, and that's actually caused them a few problems because of the the kind of strict laws that you have in countries like uh, like Norway and Sweden. Actually, some of their beers they've had to rename. Actually, uh, they they actually imported Cody the Crooked Cop into uh, Sweden recently. It had to just be called Cody because it was uh, it was sort of censored by the Swedish government a little bit. But um, yeah, there you can see the nice Amar bottle cap on this one. The specs on this beer. This is always good about Amar Brookers as well. They tell you about the specs on the beer. So the malt base. In this one is Pilsner Crystal 150, Carrot Aroma Chocolate, and uh, Black Malt and some Roasted Barley. And the hops in this one are Hercules from Germany and then Columbus and Simcoe from America. And they've also added honey and Demerara sugar to this one. And it's a US ale yeast strain that they've used in this beer. So lovely looking beer this one. And without further ado, we'll get it out and get on with the tasting then. So it's best before February 2020. I can't actually remember when I bought this beer, but I did, as I say, keep this one specifically aside for my Christmas day beer of 2017. So let's get it out and into the glass then and see how we get on. So yeah, as you can see, this guy's pouring a nice dark ebony rosewood colour. Yeah, that looks pretty damn awesome I have to say. So yeah, nice dark ebony rosewood colour to this beer. A solid finger and a half of a quite dark um, beige tan head on this one, some big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and quite a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of that head there but overall it does look really really quite nice, there's one or two little bits of sediment just floating around in there but I have been keeping this beer I think for uh, for around a year actually so that's not too surprising to be honest with you but it looks uh, really really quite nice and pretty much exactly what you would expect from an imperial stout, if I put my fingers behind the glass you're seeing no light passing through that, ebony rosewood is a pretty much the correct way to describe this one. So let's take a closer look at the aroma then and see how we get on. Yeah. This one to me actually smells really quite bready and cakey. And you can definitely pick up the brown sugars jump out of this one at you right away. I always find that honey comes across, it almost has a little bit of an almost wafery smell to it. It's a brown sugary wafery smell. That's how honey always comes out to me, but you can definitely smell those nice, uh, sweet Demerara sugars coming out of it. It smells like a really, really nice beer, this one. There's a little bit of a roasted black, uh, roasted black malt backbone to it, but there's a nice sort of sweet, milky chocolate coming out as well. Maybe some nutty kind of notes as well, but to me it's definitely got a sort of cakey. It's definitely got a sort of cakey and... Uh, almost bready backbone to it. It's almost got a little bit of a kind of brown bready thing going on, which is really interesting. Yeah, it's, it's a cracking beer, this is. I always say, just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of your beers before you get stuck into this one. But yeah, definitely some nutty character in there. A little bit of a sort of uh, earthy hot note, but you can pick up a little bit of an almost kind of candied red fruit as well. That always happens with some of these malts that you use in the beer. You always get just a little bit of a kind of candied red fruit coming out of it, but really I think the way to sum this one up is, is in terms of an imperial stout, it really leans towards the sweeter side of things, those brown sugars, the, the demerara sugar and the, the honey that they've added to this one are coming out really quite nicely in it actually. So yeah, just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this one before you get stuck in, but let's try this now. So this one is La Santa Muerte, 
from Amar Brukus, one of my favourite breweries in Scandinavia, from Copenhagen in Denmark. Merry Christmas to you guys, a good Yule as you would say, I believe both in Danish and in Swedish, whatever God or whatever you want to appreciate for Christmas. I, I always think, it, I think religion's stupid, but yeah, have a nice holiday, enjoy time with your family and all this kind of thing, but let's get stuck into this beer. Cheers, Skull, Slanja. You know, it's a pretty, it's a damn good beer, that. You can tell straight away, and this is the thing, with Amar Brucus, when it comes to an Imperial Stout, you know that you're going to get something of a good quality. I mean, I'm trying to think of the other Imperial Stouts that I've had from them before. Probably one of my favourite Imperial Stouts, I would say, is Herr Fredriksen. Herr Fredriksen is one of the kind of pinnacle Danish Imperial Stouts, along with the like of uh, Even More Jesus, uh, you know... Uh, Black Hole from McKellar as well. There's also one of the ones from Horn Beer as well. The name, I can't think of the name right now. But, you know, Herr Fredriksen is probably my my favourite stout beer that I've had from uh, from Amar Brukus. And this one's it's completely different. This one's just completely different in feel. And that's what I love about this brewery. They do all these different beers, but they're always unique. And this one for me is certainly pretty damn good as well. So as I always say, sugar the beer around your palate a little bit and let your whole mouth adjust to it. But this one, it has a really nice roasty black malt backbone to it. For me, it's actually quite a strong uh, bl like black malt backbone that it has. That really pushes its way out as the flavour kind of mellows out a little bit. It's a really inter it's a really kind of interesting beer, this one. Yeah, it's really interesting. It's not. It really is not what I was expecting from the aroma. Of this one, it's a lot more roasty and toasty than I was thinking. There is a wee bit of bitterness from the hops as well, which is quite interesting. With Hercules, of course, Hercules is a relatively high alpha acid German hop. It gives you a little bit more of a kind of spicy floral character, and uh, the Columbus. And uh, the Simcoe can give you some really interesting things if you put them in Imperial Stouts as well. But on the hoppy side of things, in the back corners of the palate, it's definitely a little bit earthy. As you come further forward along the sides of the tongue, it does have a little bit of that kind of spicy character. It's not quite floral. It does maintain that kind of earthy thing. And round the front curve of the palate, that earthiness kind of stays there. But there is just a wee touch of a kind of grassy note as well, which is interesting. The hop side of this beer is pretty good. It's really just interesting how that comes out. This one is, has got a good bit of bitterness from the malt base and from the hoppy side of things. But yeah, the sugars in this one, the brown sugars, are coming out. You can feel the beer comes in and then you can feel these nice brown sugar notes just coming out. They've, they come out with just a little bit of delay, if that makes sense, and then they kind of subside a little bit. And that's when you get the roasty kind of black malt thing. It, the roasty black malt just blankets the, the, the whole middle of your tongue where the malts are going to come out. But then you start to get the more complex notes of it a bit later. It kind of... The, the roasty black malt comes in, it mellows out a little bit, you start to get some of the brown sugar, the black notes come out, and then the it, the whole beer just mellows out a little bit more and you start to get the brown sugars. It's really interesting this one, it's kind of... The, the sort of flavour of this one is kind of up, down, up, down, up, down, which is interesting. But yeah, in terms of the flavour of this one in the middle then, it's got that, as I say, that nice roasty black malt backbone. There's a little bit of an almost, when it mellows out a little bit, you've almost got a little bit of this kind of cakey character to it. Right in the middle of your palate, that's where these nice kind of dark demerara sugars are coming out. You can feel in there as well that sort of honey flavour, that almost wafery honey note. There's a little bit of a kind of biscuity, uh, grainy character as well, which is interesting. I just like how everything kind of blends together as well, but you really can feel that roasty black malt just underpinning it. As the flavour kind of mellows out a little bit, you do start to get some kind of nutty notes out of it, which is really interesting. And uh, there's almost, I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a licorice note to this one. Sometimes in these, in the Amar beers in particular, you can get a little bit of licorice. But in this one, I really don't think so. I think it's got that kind of cakey uh, feel to it. The roasty black malt in this one is, is a bit more prominent, I would say, than in some of their other Imperial Stouts that they do. But it comes across really nicely. I was expecting this one 
to be a little bit sweeter than it is to be honest when they're saying it's an imperial honey stout it has got a really nice brown sugar presence but for me it does lean a little bit more towards the roasty toasty side, side of things than I was expecting Not nothing wrong with that of course but you know it's just when it's an imperial honey stout you do expect it to be more of a sweet stout and it's not it's not quite that but it's a damn good beer I can see why it's highly rated you know And in fairness, what I would say about it is that this, I mean, obviously when you're drinking a big beer like this, it does take your palate a little bit of time to adjust. And as your palate adjusts to the beer, it does almost mellow out a little bit. You start to get more of these kind of sweeter brown sugar notes out of it. And so in fairness, yeah. And the other thing that will happen as the temperature increases, I was drinking this beer, I think around 9 degrees, which is within the range that you should kind of drink uh, an imperial stout at, but that as the, you put the temperature of it up, the sweeter parts of the malt base will start to come out a little bit more. So if you are drinking this beer, do bear that in mind with it because it is a little bit more roasty, I think, than it should be. Maybe I've not served it at quite the right temperature, but as it mellows out, you really do start to get more of the brown sugar elements. When it, and when it's an imperial honey stout, that is kind of exactly what you expect. But it's a lovely, lovely beer this one, and I always enjoy trying these imperial stouts. In terms of the Amar imperial stouts, like I said, I think this one leans a little bit more to the roasty, toasty, bitter side of things than some of the other ones that they do. This one isn't quite as a chocolatey. There is a little bit of chocolatey element to this one, but compared to the aroma, it doesn't quite have that milky chocolate to it. It's almost a little bit more of a dark chocolate, and right in the middle of the palate is where you're getting the brown sugars, and the chocolatey character just kind of goes around the outside of that, if it makes sense. But it's interesting just how this whole beer goes together, and this one does really test your palate a little bit, because there's a lot going on in it, I would say that. In terms of the fruity side of the beer, then, Yeah, it's interesting as well, as I always say, the little fruity components come out just in that little oily bubble that's behind the front curve of your tongue, it just comes out there. And it's interesting because this one has a little bit of a citrusy character to it. It's almost, it's really close to actually having just a little bit of that passion fruity thing that you would normally get in an IPA from it, from the Simcoe. I think the fruitiness will be coming from both from the Columbus a little bit and from the, 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 uh, from the, the Simcoe. But, um... It does have a little bit of a citrusy character to it, which is it's quite interesting actually. Normally you would expect a little bit of a red kind of candied fruit, and you do get that as you progress further into the aftertaste. But the citrusy component that this beer has is uh, is pretty interesting as well. But it's a really interesting beer. There's a lot going on in this one, so this is one that will test your palate. And if you're like me, uh, it will suit you down to a T in that regard. In terms of the mouthfeel then, I would say this beer's full-bodied. Carbonation is quite smooth. Overall, it's a really quite oily beer, this one. The malt base, like I say, leans a little bit more towards the roasty, toasty side of things, but as the beer mellows out, it does get a little bit sweeter, especially with those brown sugar additions to it. It's got a good little bit of hoppy bitterness to it as well, and there is just a wee bit of a kind of juicy, fruity character to it as well. But overall, a really interesting beer, and I'm glad that I kept this aside because I really have been missing these uh, Amar Bruku beers. I've got a lot of them to catch up on when I do make it back out to Sweden in uh, next summer. So I'm really looking forward to my, next, my first trip over to Copenhagen. This one is a really, really damn good beer, and I'm glad that I got to try it. So once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below, and uh, do let me know your favourite beers from Amar Brukus as well, and let me know some of the other Danish beers and breweries that I should check out. But this one's been really, really damn good, and I'm glad that I got to try it. So yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas. I'm enjoying a Christmas up here in Scotland with my family as I always do every year but it's been really cool to uh, to, to have one of my favourite Scandinavian breweries to review for you at this time because you know I really do miss it Scandinavia is home these days to me and um, so I'm glad that I got to review this beer so happy Christmas and once again thank you for watching until the next time slans just now make sure you check out some of these Amar Brukus beers if you haven't already cheers Skull.